So today I am going to talk to you about a ball based game normally known as the billiards game which has several formats British and American and Russian and Italian and French and many other with the Chinese also so this is an old game a 19th century game which is started with uh, balls made of wood and later on they were replaced by ivory and then nowadays there are synthetic balls which are normally made in belgium and which are made out of resins and epoxies now this game i used to be a hockey player but when i landed in delhi iit long back in 1967 i had a chance to look at the billiards room for the first time and the clutter and clicks and inoffs and pots etc they fascinated me and i started learning this game 30 minutes a slot per day with a partner and the marker was miss johnny johnny boy who was very dear to us and he would show all kinds of gimmicks of the game and fascinate me so normally after the tea time at 5 o'clock i have a slot at about 6 o'clock and therefore i missed out at going to the hockey field <coughs> the ball size was almost the same in hockey i had to fit, hit the ball or stop the ball with a stick and here we had a cue c u e q a stick a long stick which is about uh, the mass of the stick is about 3 times the mass of the ball <coughs> around look there were so many sticks and there were so many cue stands and three tables lay one after the other with johnny boy shouting from one table to another table <coughs> this came fascin fascinated me and i then 1971 i came to aligarh and there uh, there was a tradition of billiards mu staff club had one of the oldest tables where people used to come and have half an hour slots to and readily i was one of their star players <coughs> anyway not going into the details what i must remember on this occasion one of the doyens of indian billiards dr m cocker <coughs> who was a descendant of wajid ali shah and a reader at uh, the urdu department who could was the only person i learned could speak british english the king's english anyway so that the two things now combine i have been a teacher since 1971 teaching physics and knowing the nuances of newtonian mechanics at least so this is what we are going to talk in the preliminary lecture about the billiards ball physics where all balls are 
whether they are in the game of snooker or in the game of billiards, also in the game of pools, which are uh, very much recognized and played in the various cities and fossils. So, after that uh, introductory talk about how I am going to combine my teaching physics and my passion for videos in school, of which I have been a student since 1969, as I told you. Uh, and uh, every alternate day of my life has been spent in the video room where I have learned the nuances of the game. So, billiards, the physics of billiard ball collision is a very simple thing. And simple things are difficult to understand. So, what are the principles which is involved is a principle in mechanics and that is known as the, the law of conservation of momentum. As also there is the law of conservation of energy. The billiard ball, a round shaped body of material about uh, a density of about 1700 kilograms per meter cube or 1.7 grams per uh, cubic centimeter is uh, a little more than 2 inches in diameter. The diameters vary, uh, for example, in, in the snooker ball it is about uh, uh, 2 and inches and 1.16 inch in diameter. So there are variations. So they are, uh, the details I am not going to get in depth into. What we consider in these collisions that the collisions are nearly, uh, we will consider them to be perfectly elastic, though they are not. But nearly elastic collisions are there of two rigid bodies. A rigid body is the one in which whether there is a translatory motion or whether there is a rotatory motion, under all circumstances the relative distance between two particles is the same, it does not change. And there is no deshaping of the body under any circumstance. So even though when the ball hits another ball, there is some kind of a uh, disturbance of the rigidity, but we consider that to be of no consequence, whatever, because we have to understand that. <coughs> now, the billiard balls, they are placed and they are run on a uh, table, uh, slate and cloth, and of course there is some friction, friction associated with these surfaces. But right now we consider that the collision is going to take place when the transfer of the impulse, the transfer of momentum takes place from the cube stick to the ball. Normally the cube stick is having a mass about uh, three times the mass of the billiard ball, the two ball. Of course, the two balls have the same mass, the same diameter, and they are made about the same material. So, now we are going to consider not a head-on collision, but a collision on a side. And the collision takes place at a certain point. What we are going to in the beginning to make you understand is that the ball has been hit by the cube. When the cube is parallel to the bed and it is hit 
exactly in the middle of the cue ball. Cue ball is hit, is hit exactly by the tip of the cue in the uh, when the cue is parallel to the other ball. This ball gains a speed, a velocity, because in the concept of velocity we have the magnitude as well as the direction. Now this, if the ball, we call it uh, ball A, then we will call this velocity before impact, before collision as V1A. After that, this ball is deflected if it is hit on the side. We are not going to talk, talk of, about the head-on collision. And the object ball is, it also gains a velocity which is, we call uh, ball as ball B. So the velocity is uh, V2B. Now, if we work out with the help of the simple equations of uh, conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy, which is not there, but we consider that because the bodies are rigid bodies, because the bodies are uh, perfectly elastic uh, in collision, so therefore we consider that the ball A will be deflected maybe uh, to our right and the ball B is deflected in the left direction. When we work out the equations as we have shown, then what happens is that as you can see there, there are so many angles, theta that have been shown, the deflection angles. And it will be easier for you to understand if you look into the geometry of it, the schematic diagram, and you find and we derive that the velocity V2B, V V2 are and velocity V A2, these two are at an angle of 90 degrees to each other. So when that theta becomes equal to 0 or there is a head-on collision then of course the ball hitting the other ball, transferring the momentum, that will stop, will come to a stop as after, after the collision is taken place. Else there is a, a beautiful way, the way the balls are going to roll after the uh, collision has taken place, a perfectly elastic collision, we assume only because there is a sound and there the kinetic energy is converted into sound energy also. Okay? And there is uh, some energy transferred to the bed. Of course, in the next lectures, we will talk about as what happens if the cube hits above the center of the ball, below the center of the ball, to the left of the center of the ball and to the right of the center of the ball and a complex combination of these which results into the trajectory of the balls as per and there the science combines to give arts uh, and the players they can display many things, pullbacks and uh, lefty spins and righty spins and all kinds of things. And even the match is short. We we'll talk about these shots, these uh, trajectory which result uh, after the collisions have taken place in a subsequent lecture. Hope you have enjoyed it and the equations also will appear. And the uh, schematic diagram and you can just work it out and enjoy this introductory first lecture 
and I'm very happy about it because this combines my little bit of knowledge with my uh, extreme passion for the game of billiards, snooker, and also I don't play. But sometimes I go and see and watch the boys playing beautiful uh, the game of pool or carom, etc., which is not very popular in our part of place. Okay, thank you very much. See you again. Okay.